Good morning, fifth grade. Today we're going to read in our text homework P Fig. And our focus today is going to be on figurative language when we get to our parallel teaching. Um, but before we get started, we have a fill in the blank summary. It says Homer discovered that Squint unlawfully sold Harold into the Union Army. Homer waits until Squint goes to sleep. Then he steals Squint's horse, Bob, and rides off in the dark to find Harold. Press pause to fill in the blanks and play when you're ready to keep reading. Our pre-reading today is some figurative language, and instead of writing in the meanings right now, um, uh, we are going to do the meanings. Sorry. You'll also have a figurative language foldable that we're going to talk about in parallel teaching today. The first one is simile. That's a phrase that uses the words like or as to compare two things. An example would be, she is as sad as a cloud full of rain. And the meaning that what that actually means is that she is really sad. So you would write that meaning down in number one, she is really sad. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for number two. A metaphor is a phrase that states that one thing is the other. It compares two things without using like or as. An example would be, she cried a river of tears. She didn't actually cry that many tears, but what the author is trying to say is that she cried a lot. So for the meaning, you would write, she cried a lot. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for number three. It's personification. That's when you give a non-human object or animal human-like qualities. So an example would be, the river swallowed the earth as the water continued to rise higher and higher. The river did not actually swallow the earth, but the author is trying to tell us um, that it's flooding. If the water is rising higher and higher and it looks like it's swallowing the earth, that means that it's flooding. So for the meaning, you are right, it is flooding. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for number four. It says, it's a hyperbole. That's an extreme exaggeration. So the example would be, I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. The person isn't actually going to eat a horse, but horses are large animals, and she's trying to communicate that she's very hungry. So for the meaning, you would write, I am very hungry. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready to read. Turn the page in your notes, and as we read Chapter 5, we are going to use our CSPS strategy because this is a fiction text. It is a made-up story. So turn in your text to Chapter 5, and we're going to get started reading. And as we're reading, make sure you underline your CSPS evidence. Let's get started. You probably already know this, but horses don't like to go places at night any more than the sensible folks do. A horse has his patterns and his habits, the night and night is for standing around and sleeping. For a while, Bob keeps trying to turn back his eyes, rolling white and fearful, but he doesn't fight me so much, all things considered. Good horse, I keep telling him. Mostly so I can hear the sound of my own voice, because the forest has a way of creaking and groaning and puts a lump of nothing in my stomach. It's only the tall trees, I keep telling myself, the pine and spruce, the hackmatack moving in the wind, the way their long bows brush like fingers and make a sighing you can feel deep in your bones. Go horse, I say, go horse. It's not like we're moving fast. Bob's old and slow. Turn the page. Besides, even a young horse can't run in the dark or he'll break a leg for sure. Has to see the ground or he doesn't feel connected. 
I walk far for miles, and then skinny up on his back and let him walk me for a while. Under the nice shadows of the mighty trees, finding our path through the blind darkness, me and that good old horse. We'll stop right there because we have information about our character and setting. Um, and I underlined this first sentence um, in the first paragraph on page 22 because it told me about what Harold and Bob were doing. Um, so you should underline it and write a C out beside it. And in box one, we would write down, Homer and Bob are in the woods at night trying to find Harold. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the quote. And for the quote, we will write down this sentence that I underlined in box 1B. I walk Bob for miles and then skinny up onto his back and let him walk me for a while. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the setting. And for the setting, I underlined the next sentence in the first paragraph that says, Under the night shadows of the mighty trees, finding our path through the blind darkness, me and that good old horse. And that lets me know in box 2A, I will write, Homer and Bob are in the woods at night. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the quote. And we will write down this quote on page 22 that we've underlined and put an S out beside. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for box 3. We're going to keep reading on page 22. All the time, Harold is in my mind. How he must have marched and marched with the stick of his shoulder, with the stick on his shoulder, and the whiskey sergeant shouting orders. Does it scare him to be far from home? Does he know I might follow? Did he? Did his feet hurt? Then I get to fussing that bears might get him, black bears as big as boulders, and it makes me so fearful that the shadows start to look like hungry bears and the spruce branches are the bear's long teeth snapping at us from behind. Bob the horse, he knows I'm afraid, and it makes him afraid too, and he starts to pick up the pace. Whoa, now, hold. I pull back on the reins, but the horse won't stop. He got an idea in his head, and that idea is to run away from the darkness and the shadows, run until he gets to daylight and can see the world again. All I can do is hang on, clinging to his thick neck, Branches whipping all around us, so close I could smell the pine needles. The horse snorting with fear and shaking his head to keep clear of the reins. Riding blind at a full gallop, trusting his hooves to find the way, not caring what the next step brings. Figure any second he'll trip and break a leg, and I go flying and crack my skull on a tree or rocks, and that would be the end of my adventure. But just as fast as he bolted, Bob starts to slow down. He runs out of oats and remembered how old he is, and he can't run that fast no more. And he's heaving and gasping and snorting up a lather. Got to rest the horse or he'll die on me for certain. Poor old thing is shaking. He's so wrung out, making funny little noises deep in his throat that mean he's still plenty scared. Me too, because I hear something in the dark that shouldn't have been there. Voices. Folks talking. Men sounds like one of them low and rumbly so the words are muffled, but the other voice, the one that's doing all the telling, that voice is clear. Kill that son of a bee, it says. Kill him while we got the chance. So we will stop right there because we now have our problem. Um, and we know that Harold is scared of the dark. And he's scared because he hears two men talking about killing someone. So in box 3A, we would write, Homer, Homer is scared of the dark. And he is scared because he hears two men talking about killing someone. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the quote. And for the quote, we would write down the sentence that we underlined and put a P out beside. Press pause to write down your answer to write down your quote in box 3b and play when you are ready for box 4. And so we know that chapter ends with the problem, so there's not a solution at the end of this chapter. So in box 3a we will write, the problem is not solved in this chapter because the problem comes at the very end of the chapter.
Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for 4B. And for 4B, we will write down this last sentence that lets us know that there is not a solution. Kill that son of a B, it says, kill him while we got the chance. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the paragraph. It says, what problem does Homer face? How does he respond to this challenge?